place that we're in right now is called Old Montreal. Lots of really, really old buildings, lots of tourist traps, lots of fancy restaurants. If you're in Montreal, you have to come here and definitely try the maple syrup. The Montrealers have quite a proud food culture based around foods that are not uh, particularly good for you. Poutine, bagels, smoked meat sandwiches, their hot dogs, and of course, their maple syrup. Quebec is actually the main producer of maple syrup in Canada, and as a result, Quebecers really lean into that as one of their symbols, even more so, I would argue, than the rest of Canada. Maple syrup. I love maple syrup. I'm a big fan. Wow. Yeah, that's the best thing ever. Oh my god. That's delicious. It's so good. It's so good, bro. It's like heaven. Oh, it's so good. Okay, I think, I think you're going to be wired if I give you any more. There is an undeniable allure to maple products, not just with tourists who come to Quebec, but also with foodies and connoisseurs around the world. I freaking love maple syrup. I cook with it, I use it as my sweetener, I put it on everything. Maple syrup is, for a lot of people, the second thing that comes to mind when you think of Canada. The first being hockey. <laughs> so I brought you a present from Canada. Is it poutine? Well, see, I couldn't bring if it. If it's not, we don't want it. This morning at five. No, I think you will, I think you will. Maple because, syrup? Yeah. Real maple syrup is a special treat. It's sweet with notes of caramel, and it's the perfect consistency for fluffy pancakes. To be clear, I'm not talking about this stuff. I'm talking about this. In Canada, it's called liquid gold, and that's not just because of its amber hue. Pure maple syrup is 28 times more expensive than crude oil. One liter of this sweet stuff is worth about 12 Canadian dollars. Just one of these barrels goes for $2,000. It seems a lot more expensive than the, the golden syrup. Why, why is it more expensive? I mean, it says it comes from Canada. Getting it over in Canada is going to be expensive, isn't it? Making maple syrup should be simple. It's just taking what the tree gives you without adding anything. And yet, that doesn't make it easy. The way to harvest it used to be collecting the maple water from each individual tree during a short window of time after winter, but before spring officially arrives. The sap is still 98% water by weight, so you take the sap to a sugar house. Here, the raw sap gets boiled down. We gotta cook it because this is coming from the ground, there's bacteria. How long does this take to produce? 24 hours. 24 hours? <laughs> 24 hours. Sometimes so we sleep down here in the woodshed. These kettles hold 60 liters of okay. sap. And how much you left with in the end? One and a half. You need 40 liters of sap to do one liters of maple syrup. 40 to one. You can almost taste the 40 to one because it's very diluted. So all the way along, you've got all these various factors stacking against you, like a very short tapping season. You only get one liter of maple syrup per maple tree, because which make maple syrup a very lovely natural product, but ultimately quite an expensive product as well. Today, most maple syrup comes from a vast hardwood forest that spans from the Midwestern US up into Eastern Canada. This region is called the Maple Belt, and 92% of Canada's maple farms are in Quebec. There is no other places on earth where this combination climate and maple trees actually exist. This region produces all the maple syrup in the world. Maple trees are so embedded in Canada's national identity that its flag carries a maple leaf. In Canada, there's actually only three provinces that have a significant production level. Quebec, which produces 92% of all Canadian maple syrup. So that's an insane amount. It's followed by New Brunswick that has 4% production and Ontario with 3%. Typically, maple syrup is produced at what we call a cabane à sucre. Essentially, it's a large area with a lot of maple trees, and there's a cabin in the middle. The tradition of the cabane à sucre, or sugar shack, is as old as maple syrup here in Quebec, where 70% of the world's supply comes from. Deeply embedded in the maple syrup outdoor lumberjack lifestyle is the cabin in the woods, where maple sap is collected and boiled down to syrup. Over time, many of these cabins became informal eating houses, dining halls for workers and a few guests who could sit at communal tables and enjoy the bounty of the trees and forests around them. Grandfather, you know, had a sugar shack. Everybody had a sugar so You can go back, you know, three generations, they had a, a sugar shack. And I'm very proud of uh, Quebec. I'm very proud uh, of Canada, you know. It takes a special breed to live in a province like Quebec. It gets cold in winter, and winters are long. The people who live there are tough, crazy bastards, and I admire them for it. Montreal nurtures an incredibly rich regional personality. Anarchists in the best possible way. Thought leaders filled with a boundless energy and an honest love for Quebecois lifestyle. 
It's such a joyful place. Not even the cold snows of winter can take the glow off of my gustatory pleasure taking. I have been in Montreal for a fair bit longer than I anticipated, and as a result, I have bought quite a lot of souvenirs. I bought this little postcard, which I thought was quite cute. It is a stylized depiction of the little man on the maple syrup can. There is this very iconic can of canned maple syrup. I went to one of the uh, iconic farmer's markets, and you know, everywhere you go, you see these big tables just brimming with the uh, maple syrup cans. I got maple syrup in a can. What? I love Canada. All this maple, there's so many maple, and they're all good. We've got maple butters, maple syrups. Look at the little cool glasses. You know, this is, of course, Canada, the home of maple syrup. Okay, we're in a maple syrup store. The best maple syrup in the entire world is made in Quebec. Look at all the selection. Can I smell it? Oh, can you imagine bathing in That smells really good. It's maple syrup lip balm. Oh my god. Way to be Canadian. <laughs> You can buy this at any souvenir shop in Canada. That's what we're known for. In a maple syrup store, and I'm about to try some maple syrup. This does feel like a lot, a lot of sugar. calories. So good. Yeah, it, it's really good. It's very good maple. When I was little and I used to go on field trips, I remember this was always like one thing that the kids would always get. They pour maple syrup over ice, then they get the stick, and they just roll it up. Canadian ice maple syrup popsicle. There, it's unavoidable, the string. So, uh, <laughs> that is actually delicious. Oh, it is delicious. It's ten times better than Aunt Jemima Maple knockoff brand. Maple anything is always delicious. So good, right? There are 13,500 maple syrup producers in Quebec who have joined forces to market a product that they and all Quebecers are incredibly proud of. Quebec's people consume ten times more maple syrup per capita than those of us south of the border. Few really know how maple products are produced. How does tree sap turn into one of the world's great products comparable to olive oil, vanilla, or even wine? Let's dig into the sticky history of this liquid gold. You can tap most maple trees, but the sweetest and most popular tree for syrup is the sugar maple, or Acer saccharum. These trees are ancient giants. Some are over 300 years old and can be as tall as 35 meters. Their sap contains 2 to 3 percent sugar, which is what makes maple syrup so delicious and caloric. But unlike sugar, maple syrup has a hefty dose of minerals and 24 antioxidants. So what you're saying is take it like medicine. Roger that. Have you ever wondered how it was first discovered? We owe it to the First Nations people. Legend says that they saw a squirrel drinking sap from a maple tree and decided to try it themselves. The First Nations people knew all about maple water because they had a holistic approach to nature, which meant they used everything around them in their everyday lives. Indigenous people taught French settlers to tap maples and gather syrup. Jacques Cartier was the first settler to mention maple syrup in 1557, but it wasn't until the late 1700s that European settlers began to produce this treat. Over many years, the First Nations people and Europeans exchanged ideas and ways to prepare it. When iron pots came from France, they were used to make maple sugar for the first time. The first sugar shacks started in the 1850s and sugar parties as early as 1868. Alright, it's day two in Montreal and we're actually headed out of the city and we're going to a sugar shack. And it's like this whole thing around like maple. There's an experience that comes along with it where you have like a full meal. Like it's gonna be a bunch of food that comes. It's gonna be on like a farm, which is really cool. So there should be farm animals. I'm so excited about this. Hello! Hello! Yeah! How are you? Lucas! Lucas, nice to meet you! Nice to meet you! Welcome to my maple forest, Lucas. Every one of them is a maple tree. Isn't it beautiful? It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. You're on a 120 acre maple farm. Welcome to Sucrerie de la Montagne. We've uh, continued the traditional method of making maple syrup. So we're uh, collecting maple water from the maple trees the old fashioned way. We have 2,000 buckets installed all around the forest. I'm in Saint Robert Bellarmé in Quebec, the region where there's the most tapped maple trees in the world. Actually, Every year, they tap over a million trees to make maple syrup. Luc and René Pépin are the owners of one of the biggest sugar shacks in Quebec. Their maple farm has about 160,000 tap trees, and they produce about 560,000 cans of maple syrup per season. 
what are all these lines? The blue lines connected all the trees to harvest maple sap. So this is transporting the maple sap. How many lines do you have? Around 16 kilometers. Wow. An average size farm has 6,000 taps harvesting the maple sap. Natalie has 20,000 on hers. And that's the sap being pulled out? Yeah, you see, it. maple sap. How much sap can that give over? One tree gives around 48 litres. Wow. 48 litres per tree seems like a pretty good return per season. The downside is that the season only lasts for six weeks, between March and April. We basically have a six week window and we need freezing nights and above freezing during the day. You know, when you get to the end of March, well, every day it's below freezing is a lost day of production. So you can see the bark, the shavings coming out are quite clear and that's just our dripping right away. Frigid temperatures during our visit prevented Pierre's son, Stefan, from even showing us how to tap a tree. And that's a half inch bit. <laughs> oh, oh, the bit broke. It must be cold out. It's very cold. It's really cool. If you've never gone out to a place that's tapping trees, you should, because it's a great feeling. I mean, there, here we go. That's going to wind up on my pancakes someday. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Martin's not in the business of selling syrup. All of this exists solely to supply his restaurants. The sap runs directly from the trees through miles of hoses into this pumping station in the woods. So that's the sap is coming from the maple. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That's good. <laughs> from here, the forest pumping station pumps the sap through networks of tubes down to Martin's restaurant for processing. I'm not sure I want to taste that much, to be honest. Fresh, pure maple sap. At the moment, the sap is 97% water, 2% sugars, 1% minerals, and amino acids. It's actually nice. It's got slightly sugared water. The sap is boiled for around six hours to evaporate much of the water. It's only then that the maple magic begins. Here is the real maple syrup. Wow. It smells fantastic. It's just delicious. When the sugar concentration reaches 66%, the sap becomes syrup. For Pierre Fauché, the entire year boils down to a precious few days. With these high ceilings and the smoke, it's very magical. It's like a church. Well, it is like a, it's a blessing of spring. Yes. It is like a cathedral. And all the trees out there are the pillars of the cathedral. Right. This whole sugar shack is full of steam. We don't want all that steam here, Jonathan, so we open our special roof. Yeah, open the doors to the maple spa. The free sauna experience. <laughs> The maple sauna. You can charge a lot for this. And there goes all the steam. So this is what you see when you're driving down the road. You see those clouds coming That's from right. Sugar Shack. That's right. That's what this is. This is the First Nations method of making maple syrup. They didn't have the metal pans that we're going to see later on. Right. So they're going to use the hollowed out log. I saw you put some stones in the fire as well. Pick up the rock, dump it in there. Oh. So there's the steam coming off. So that's the water reducing. So they'd boil it down definitely a really long, hard long, process. Long, arduous process, and yeah. no matter what, when it was finished, what was in here would have been treasured. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So now that the maple syrup is ready, it's about to be filtered. The syrup passes through this press filter here. It takes out any kind of natural sands in the maple syrup, and then passes it along to the bottling unit. It is then stored in food grade barrels before being transported to the Quebec Maple Syrup Producers Warehouse. The independent organization, Acer's Inspection Division, handles quality tests for every barrel of maple syrup. A sample from each barrel is collected in order to be tested for clarity, sugar content, taste, and color, either golden for a delicate taste, amber for a rich taste, dark for a robust taste, very dark for a strong taste. Some of that maple syrup might end up in the Global Strategic Maple Syrup Reserve. Welcome to Laurierville, a small, unassuming town about a two hours drive from Montreal. It's got its church, its bank, its library, and an emergency reserve of maple syrup. Wait, what? There are hundreds of millions of dollars worth of maple syrup in this warehouse. Just one of these barrels goes for $2,000. 
It's a strategic move by Quebec maple syrup producers to ensure no Canadian ever has to deal with a lack of syrup at the breakfast table. You know what this reminds me of? You know that warehouse in Indiana Jones where they store all the crazy stuff? Except it's not crazy stuff, it's maple syrup. Oh, and for those of you who remember the great maple syrup heist of 2012, when thieves stole $30 million worth of the sticky stuff from a warehouse in Montreal, don't worry about this place. What's security like here? Uh, I wouldn't try and break in, that's all I'll say. So today I get to do a Quebec tradition that I haven't done since I was a little kid, and it's going to be summer's first experience, a traditional Quebec cabana soup like breakfast, and then of course, maple taffy. Oh my god, this is gonna be amazing. Okay, let's go and eat lots of food. I skipped breakfast today on purpose. I believe the portions are quite big. So yeah, let's do it. As soon as you sit down, the food starts coming out. There is no menu as such. So you just sit down, you get all these different courses that we're trying right now, and you just eat and you better come hungry. That is what I'm telling you. Pickled beets, pickles, pea soup with maple syrup, of course. This right here, I love this stuff. This is called Cretan, made from pork. You're supposed to spread this on bread and eat it. Oh. Rip into a fluffy slice of this wood-fired bread. A real nice crumb on this, too. It is quite a hearty and rich tasting white bread. Yeah, this, this sort of wood-fired bread will often have some extra calories, yeah. Speak of the devil, more calories. Steamed potatoes, meatballs and gravy, baked beans with uh, maple syrup, of course, eggs, ham, and they call this, what do they call this? Les oreilles de Christ. <laughs> Price Sears? Yeah. Price Sears? Price Sears. Basically, super crispy fried bacon. Listen to this. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Alright, so pretty standard plate, but you gotta add this onto everything. And now, you're talking cabana soup. I'm having some ham, and it's very delicious, especially when I pour maple syrup on it. Which Can is, I have some yes, of the maple absolutely. syrup? Yeah, I have to say, I mean, for me, as a savory person, savory fan, it does take a moment to get used to. Who is surprised? It does actually work. <laughs> also got the tortillera here, which is like classic Quebec meat pie. Often tortillera is perhaps more of a rural dish. Its origins are sort of more in the Quebec countryside. I really like the crust on it. Really beautiful. A little greasier than your average. Flaky yeah. crust. And if you didn't think the crispy bacon was good enough, dredge that in maple syrup and hit it up. Oh. Baby, what do you think so far? You want more creton? There you go. That's right, there's six piece. what 200 kids who have been drinking maple syrup all morning looks like, this is it. <laughs> As if that wasn't enough, there's live entertainment and now dessert. Sugar maple pie, fluffy looking pancakes, oh my goodness. But there's another kind of sugar shack out here. About 70 kilometers out of Montreal, there's a sugar shack that stands as a monument to the Montreal culture of splendid excess. I've got a rendezvous with maybe the biggest lunch on the continent. Martin Picard has taken this tradition to what is somehow both its logical conclusion and insane extreme, creating his own cabana soup and serving food stemming directly from those humble yet hearty roots. You celebrate Canadian history, you celebrate Canadian traditions, you celebrate Canadian ingredients in a way that no one else has. Are you some kind of patriot? Is it national? That's very much it. He's very much a patriot. I say all the time, this is one of the most important restaurants in North America, if not the world. It's an art installation if you actually pretty good look at it. The dining hall seats about 300 people. There's no menu. Everyone gets the same 10-course meal. Every dish in this meal will be seasoned in some form or fashion with that fresh maple syrup. Let the madness begin. The meal begins, begins with a tower of maple desserts. Good Lord. Sponge maple toffee, maple donuts, beaver tails, maple cotton candy, but, but, but wait, there's more. Almond croissant, whippet biscuits, some nougat. 
dinner starts dainty. So it's uh, caviar from Saint Laurent, eggs from our chickens, and cucumber from the garden. So everything's local. I did not expect caviar. I didn't either. And did you think you'd find them in a cabin in the woods? But that was just a warm up. Now the eating begins. As we said, there's a lot of food coming out. What soup dumplings? Bao with mapo tofu and foie gras. Macro octopus on Malayan salt. <laughs> dumplings, should we pick it up or use our fork and knife? No, 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 no forks. It's, no fork. It's illegal. That's delicious. I'm a little overwhelmed. And you're not drinking fast enough, but that's all right. That's only the appetizers. How many appetizers are there? <laughs> Next, a whole loaf of foie gras with baked beans on a pancake cooked in duck fat, of course, cottage cheese and eggs cooked in maple syrup. Wow, that's awesome. And these, how is this made? With love. With love. Panko encrusted duck drumsticks with shrimp and salmon mousse and maple barbecue sauce. Good Lord. There's foie gras pea soup, salad with ham and fried pork rinds, a meat pie called a tortiere. Oh my. Hand smoked wild sturgeon, <laughs> and a lobster maple souffle. You have got to be kidding me. The souffle is baked inside the shell. The lobster meat is served outside of it. Wow. Oh my, my, my. My, my, my. Is this like a little, little souffle baked in the shell? Yeah. A potato. Oh my God. Now I'm glad that bed is there because I want to wake up here and have breakfast. And now the main course, a homegrown smoked right out front, local ham with pineapple and green beans, amandine, and chicken. But with Martin, the chicken is never just chicken. That stuff with cotechino, foie gras, and lobster. We pump lobster bisque in, in the into chicken. The chicken. Yeah, wait. Good God. Did anybody eat all of it? There's something about <laughs> Chef Martin that wants you to be as gluttonous as you've ever been in your life. Calf brain, sweet bread, foie gras. It seems pretty light, but you'll see there's a balance in between. It seems light. I've never seen anything like this in my life. No, I've never, I've never witnessed anything. I don't know why I got lunch today. I don't know why I got lunch don't ever. Don't you feel like we should be overtaxing the peasants of Nottingham Forest? Usually there's no truffle, but I just... Yes, black truffles. More truffle. Blood's getting thicker as I look at that. Pork shoulder, brined in maple syrup. I mean, look at that. Look at that. A maple syrup banquet like this, one of the best things I've ever eaten. We've had some dinners, but okay. nothing like this. The name of this show, Phil Died in the Woods. <laughs> Finally, there's maple meringue cake and maple ice cream with chocolate shards. Maple pie. Oh. No! By the way, dinner here costs $56. I hope you're hungry and near a hospital. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. But in the end, this is a sugar shack. There's another part to this tradition called maple taffy, which is cooked at a higher temperature that creates a thicker consistency. Someone should be singing the national anthem now, I mean, really. <laughs> and practically prehistoric old school Canadian classic. Maple syrup is heated, then poured on snow, becoming a kind of taffy. Frozen syrup on a stick is arguably the national dish of Canada. This is what all the fuss is about, huh? All right, Canada, let me give it a shot. Wow. Yeah, that's the best thing ever. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Wow. You have to suck it, don't swallow it, you know? Slowly, slowly. That's how it's good. That's it. Oh my god, I haven't had this in a minute. Oh, wow. Some stuff? Wow. Wow. I tried to only take half. They said that's not allowed. <laughs> mm. This is good. It's good. It's like buttery. It's delicious, yeah. It's like caramel. Rustic lollipop. Mm. You can find it at markets in Montreal. So yeah, maple syrup is, it's not a stereotype, it is genuinely popular. Right. People like maple things. This is the type of tradition that you run halfway across the world to bump into that is the whole reason that I love doing what I'm doing. Montreal is one of the most gloriously decadent food cities I've ever eaten in. You guys, I don't know if I've had that much sugar since childhood all at once. <laughs> Good night. It's been a long, hard day. I need to unwind. Quebec maple syrup, a treasure to discover. 
A pure pleasure to savor. I think that's a first for me. I've never seen that done. No? Well, not with a hammer.